So I left a little bit of a cliffhanger um, on the last video. Anything to create just a little bit of interest out of something so uh, dry and boring as uh, disease prevention. Um, <clears throat> I was talking about a new vaccine for varicella zoster for shingles. Um, that vaccine has had a little bit of debate around uh, how it was going to be rolled out. So that makes you wonder, uh-oh, we got another dangerous vaccine here. Well, part of the, the whole point of the last video on uh, varicella zoster or shingles uh, and, uh, infection later in life was to make the point that, like any vaccine, yes, there can be some negative uh, reactions, but we also need to remember that the disease that it's engineered to prevent is very ugly, very disabling, associated with heart attack, stroke, uh, blindness, and um, as my grandma used to say, some pain which um, was so painful you were afraid you wouldn't die, like with uh, uh, zoster uh, ophthalmology, uh, a shingles of the eye, basically. So <clears throat> let's go back and talk a little bit more about this. Um, but before we do, a brief introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D, Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. And again, I'm a prevention doc. Uh, I used to run the prevention program at uh, Johns Hopkins a long time ago, uh, more than two decades ago. So <clears throat> still keeping up, still interested, still uh, providing information. But again, this information can sometimes sometimes be dull and boring, and uh, that's why I want to provide at least some uh, clarity around what we need to do to be considering how to avoid heart attack, stroke, and other forms of disability, such as intractable pain, which is probably as much of an issue, if not more, for the varicella zoster vaccine. Um, <clears throat> this is the classic distribution of a shingles um, episode. Why is it, why is it located in the, why is it in what we call a dermatome like that? And why is it uh, those bubbles that look like the old chicken pox bubbles? Um, <clears throat> well, here's what happens. When we have a, a childhood vaccine, usually our, our immune system wipes it out, but not so with varicella zoster. Um, varicella zoster is not completely killed, it's just contained. The virus itself goes back and becomes, quote, dormant, end quote, in the nerve ganglia near the uh, spinal cord. The, um, when, the, when you get older, when you get under stress, when you uh, start losing some of the performance of your immune system, that dormant uh, virus can crawl back out and cause this shingles. Again, varicella zoster. Now, um, here's a quick uh, diagram. You've got the child with uh, chicken pox, varicella zoster. They, uh, they kill the disease, or they contain the disease, but again, it remains alive near the spinal cord in the nerve ganglia, the nerve root ganglia. Um, this looks like more of a young man, but in old, maybe this is a young man with some sort of immune dysfunction. Um, but in older uh, people, you get more and more of this and you get release of that um, dorm, otherwise dormant virus back out into the uh, skin pattern. So that's why you tend to see it on the dermatome. Why is this on a heart attack, stroke, disability prevention channel? Because the, uh, let me do it this way, because the issue is um, more than just a, a few cases of uh, dermatome pattern shingles. The issue is uh, this can lead to blindness, this can lead to what we call neuropathy, continued severe pain, um, in addition to heart attack and stroke. Now let's get back to the advisory committees. Uh, we've got two advisory committees uh, involved here, the FDA approval 
and the CDC um, Advisory Committee for Immunization Practices, ACIP. I will provide this, um, this link, this citation, as well as several other links. Um, but I'm going to go a little bit more into detail on this, um, on this article because it is, it, it's, basically, it's a newsy article, not an academic article. And it covers why there was so much debate around this. Because, again, I'd like for you to understand uh, the details around this so you can make your own choice. I know a lot of you are going to say, heck no, I'm not going to take, I don't take vaccines at all, or I'm not going to take any medication or vaccine that's less than 10 years old. Again, <clears throat> I'm probably going to take it. Um, I had a family member take it recently. She had some significant uh, GI symptoms short term for a couple of days but you'll see why I'm strongly considering taking it as we go through some of the details. Um, <clears throat> the recommendation was close but experts say the, va uh, the vaccine is a welcome treatment. Um, <clears throat> it was an 8 to 7 vote. Uh, adults age 50 and older. It used to be 60 and older only I think for uh, Zostavax which was an attenuated vaccine a vaccine that had been uh, beat up a little bit. Um, <clears throat> this is not. This is a, a couple of pieces. It's a recombinant uh, couple of pieces of the, va of the virus, meaning the virus can't replicate. You can't change things. Um, there's less of that kind of danger associated with the, uh, with the recombinant vaccine. It was, uh, Zostavax is the older vaccine. It was approved in 2006 uh, for people 60 and older, as I mentioned. This one, Shingrix, they're saying 50 and older. And that was one of the things that irritated me. I actually took Zostavax in my mid-50s because of that issue. Um, there is significant occurrence of, um, of uh, shingles or uh, Zoster, Zoster uh, ophthalmal um, eye infection. And I wanted to avoid that and my recommendation uh, to patients that have asked has been uh, 50 and older for Zostavax, not 60 and older. In fact, I felt like a lot of that had to, probably had to do with finances. These are expensive vaccines. Uh, Zostavax is, used to be 300, now it's down to about 220. Um, and the Shingrix is going to be about 280, I think. Okay, so here's some comments from William Schaffner, uh, professor of Preve preventive medicine at Van Vanderbilt. I was going to say Vandy, but Vanderbilt. Uh, the ACIP usually does not endorse one vaccine over another. Um, it allows the market and practicing doctors to decide. So, <clears throat> for example, there are several vaccines for human papillomavirus. So if you look at that, you begin to realize that's why the, there was debate here. It wasn't so much debate about whether this was uh, a safe issue. There was some, there's, there is some debate about safety, as there always is with any new vaccine. I'll tell you about that in just a minute. But a major portion of this debate was, are we going to break our uh, usual practice in terms of saying, okay, here's a new vaccine, and yes, we're making it available. They decided to go ahead and break that practice, and here's why. The costs that we talked about a few minutes ago. Uh, if it's coming out 100 bucks more, or even 50 bucks more than the existing vaccine, um, most insurance companies are going to do what insurance companies do, recommend the cheapest uh, alternative, usually. So that was their concern. The insurance companies are going to recommend the cheapest alternative, and we think this one is enough better that we really want to go ahead and recommend it, even though we haven't done that. Recommended competing viruses, uh, I mean competing vaccines, one over another. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about why they thought it was so much better. Uh, well, before we do, just cover the safety issues. Yes, there were a group. There was a group that said uh, we should oversee the vaccine of several hundred thousand um, inoculations of Shingrix before we make that kind of recommendation. They've done a few thousand already, and for those of us, for example, if I, if I decide to go take it this weekend, I'm taking my chances in terms of it hasn't had full exposure in the market of several hundred thousand. Uh, um, 
again, I'm looking at the um, probabilities of infection and uh, significant uh, disease, even death, and, but, but more likely pain and disability associated with um, varicella zoster. That's what I'm weighing my probabilities against with um, Shingrix. Now for a few, a few minutes about why Shingrix is supposed to be so much better than Zostavax. There was a vast margin of protection against, between the two vaccines. Shingrix was much higher in effectiveness. Um, it, with uh, Zostavax, it was 37% uh, for 70-year-olds and older. For Shingrix, it was 90%. So you, you can tell where I'm going in terms of my own decision. I, I actually took Zostavax uh, back in my mid-50s. Um, Shingrix is much, much, three times better. Um, <clears throat> and if the ACIP, here's again back the issue. If the ACIP had not expressed a preference for Shingrix, insurance uh, providers and hospital administrations may not have covered the cost of the vaccine. So again, that's a huge component of the debate. It was that much better than the existing one that they decided to go ahead and say, you know what, we actually recommend it over the other. Uh, now, wh where did the data come from? It came from two uh, uh, studies. Both of them were published in the New England Journal. Both of them were done in the same centers. They were multi-center trials. Uh, thousands of people were given this uh, trial vaccine. One study was 50 years old and above, and the other study was 70 years old and above. Um, <clears throat> actually, I think I'll need to cover those in a later video. Thank you again for your interest.